Hello. <laughs> Don't worry, I am, I'm from Canada originally, but I've lived in the UK for 15 years. I know that's the standard response to hello. <laughs> <laughs> Just stare at me till I cry. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've learned a lot since I moved here. When I first came here, I used to smile. <laughs> I love your country, and I do. Everybody, uh, the schools were closed because of the wind. <laughs> yeah, you have to fucking understand, I'm from Canada, man. Like. I've heard friends call me going, oh, the school closing. Why'd you get a blizzard? No, it's, it's uh, windy. <laughs> like, we have, we have snow days in Canada. Kids would get excited. They'd be like, oh, we're going to build snowmen and we're going to snowball fights. And all the kids here waiting for rain days, <laughs> sitting at home in their rain jackets with, with their kites. <laughs> Fucking windy. <laughs> They're warning people. It's gonna be really windy. People, people in the Philippines are going at 90 miles per hour. That's fucking Monday here every day. <laughs> all right, here we go. We'll get into it. I dated uh, women all my life, and I found more and more women that I dated had experiences with other women. But when you question them about it, they describe the situation like it happened accidentally. And, that would confuse me as a man. I'd say to a woman, you ever been with another woman? It was always long-winded. Well, once, the men were fishing. It was foggy that day. <laughs> it's with Jane. We're at the lake house drinking red wine, and she found a twister game above the shoes <laughs> we hadn't played since we were kids. And she got an odd spin, red dot right hand. And <laughs> as she reached over me, uh, brushed against my breasts. Well, we giggled, and uh, then she fondled my breasts and went down on me. And it was, uh, it was beautiful, but we're not lesbians. <laughs> I have yet to run into a bloke with that kind of story. <laughs> Watching the game with Dave. A little boring in halftime, so we thought we'd kick the ball around for a little while. He came down on a breakaway, tried to score. I went out to meet him. We got tangled up, and as he <laughs> fell over me, cupped my balls. So <laughs> we giggled. <laughs> the next thing you know, his cock was in my mouth. <laughs> I'm not saying we're gay, but we're going fishing next week. <laughs> That's good that you like that, because uh, that's kind of my style. So here we go, we're going to a little bit more. I, I, uh, I came over here 20 years ago. I met my future ex-wife. <laughs> Thought I'd stay. I've got two children. i got a, like, a really young one, too. I'm like 55, and I've got a six-year-old child, and I'm, I'm fucking exhausted all the time. <laughs> it's, like, it's ridiculous, like, you know drank some red wine and forgot to come on her tits, and here we are, you know. <laughs> it was great, because, like, and, and <laughs> I always used to do that, come on her tits, and they never get pregnant. And it's great, because I'm older now, and so is she, so her tits are lower, and I don't shoot as far. I can still hit them. <laughs> but... I got, uh, my, my, my youngest was born with colic and acid reflux. I'm going to do this for the parents. And you have no idea, like, the people who don't have children, you have no idea how much it changes your life. Like, I've seen every episode of Peppa Pig. Every, <laughs> every, fu I fucking hate Peppa Pig. I can't <laughs> tell you how much I hate it. I like George, but I can't fucking stand <laughs> Peppa Pig, right? You know why I'll never go vegan? Because when I'm eating bacon, I think I'm eating that little cunt. And I fucking <laughs> love it, you know that? My 
My son was born with colic and acid reflux. It meant, uh, for those of you who don't have children or haven't done through this, it meant he cried from every moment from the point he was born all the time. There was no happy moments with this child. <laughs> I, I used to hate looking at parents with their children, and their children are just like, their babies are not crying, and mine was crying all the time. And they always think that it's, it's you that's fucking it up, right? And, <laughs> I went furniture shopping with my then uh, wife and little William, and this was after a week having him home, and he never, never slept. He just fucking screamed and cried all the time. And it wears you down as, a, as an older dad, especially. So I'm holding him. Seven days of no sleep, we're at a furniture shop, and he's screaming and crying, and I'm not even doing anything at this point, because nothing fucking works, so. <laughs> That's all you do as a parent sometimes. You just stare straight ahead, right? And, <laughs> but, but you people without kids, you don't know. You think, oh, fuck, I better tell them what to do, right? <laughs> so seven days of no sleep, I'm holding William, he's screaming and crying, and I can see these granola-eating couple of twats to my left. I'm like, like, they're gonna come over and give me advice, right? So I, I'm holding up, and I'm staring straight ahead, and now the, the woman and man are standing in front of me, and the woman <laughs> looks at me, and now keep in mind, he is really weighing, wailing and crying, and she looks at me and goes, He's not uh, happy, is he? <laughs> no. He's crying. She goes, you know what we like to do with our children? And I went, no, but I know you're going to tell me. So go ahead. She goes, we like to find out our children's likes and dislikes and only do what they like. <laughs> you know what he loves? He loves watching me kick the fuck out of a stranger. <laughs> likes and dislikes. Who are these fucking people, you know? <laughs> you see, you're all on the school run. You're all doing it properly and stuff like that. I'm hanging on by a thread. Do you know how many times I've ran my child to school and it's closed? <laughs> you know how ridiculous you look when you're running your kid and it's closed? And, and the, the custodian's always at the gate when I run up and my son's going, it's closed. And I'm like, no, it's not, because fuck you want him to go to school, right? <laughs> And he always looks at me, he gets cocky, he goes, oh, Sean, again? And I'm like, yes, again. He goes, don't you read the newsletter? And I'm like, there's a newsletter? <laughs> and then he gets cocky, right? He's like, you've been drinking? <laughs> yeah, it's Christmas. <laughs> so let me understand this, your closed boxing day as well? <laughs> I have a 14-year-old son, and I'm learning uh, as well, dealing with that, a teenager, and you realize what a dick you were when you were a teenager, but <laughs> he's just 14, they think they know it all, and he's, I know what it's like, he's, he's hard all the time, and that's, that's what you women don't realize. When you're 14 and 15, we're hard 90% of the day. <laughs> it's not sexual, our cock just goes up all the time. It could be just wind, okay, and then... Uh, <laughs> And it kind of pokes its head up and starts looking around. Hey, what's going on here? Holy fuck, is this a funeral? <laughs> There's nothing more awkward than getting a hard on at a funeral, right? Like, I used to weird them out and just go, look at him, he's so still. <laughs> yeah. All the time, just hard. This is a true story. A massage parlor, a rub and tug, we used to call them in Canada, <laughs> opened up on the high street where I live. And I'm going to tell this story because it, when I was 15, I wanted to play professional hockey in Canada. And I was playing for a competitive team. And my hope was I wasn't good enough, but I, every, every kid in Canada wants to play it. So we were going on a tournament. And there was going to be scouts there. And I hurt my back, but I didn't want to tell the, uh, the coach. So I just kept it quiet. It was killing me because I told him he wouldn't play me. So we went to a motel. Now, this is 1981. Now, keep in mind, I grew up on a farm in Canada. I never knew what massage parlors were. There was no internet to find out what they were, so I didn't know, right? I'm, I'm very naive, I'm very much a virgin, and I'm hard, right? That was it. <laughs> so we checked into a motel, my back sore. I'm in my room, and I look across the street, and I see massage and neon flashing. So I thought it was a legitimate doctor's massage office, right? So 
I decide I'll sneak over and get it done. So I walked in, not knowing it was like a sex shop, basically. And I walked in, 15 years old, and I, went, and I said, my back sore. And she goes, go in the room, take off your clothes, put a towel on, and wait. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so I went in the room, right? And I got undressed. I put the towel on. The towel touched the head of my cock. Now I'm hard, right? And I'm like, <laughs> I, so hard, too. You know that? The teenage hard on. All you guys can pretend you didn't have them. The one that touches your belly button and you can't fucking get it down. It's just like, ah. Right? So I'm just rock hard to the point where I couldn't push it down anymore. So I thought I'll tighten the towel really tight with it up and no one will notice that my cock is, I've got it wrapped. Ridiculous, right? Again, thinking this legitimate doctor's office, the doctor walked in wearing a thong and high heels. And this is how naive I am. I actually said to myself, wow, this doctor is beautiful. <laughs> so I, I, I lie on my stomach, right, not knowing what's going on. She starts working on my back, right? For about three minutes, she works on my back. I'm so hard now. I'm actually moving up on the table. I'm lying on my I'm put it down like this, right? And, and she, she goes, uh, flip over. And I said, what? She goes, flip over. Now, I was nervous, still not knowing what was going on, thinking, I can't flip over. I got a raging fucking boner, right? I'm not gonna... So she goes, flip over. We want to finish this. And I'm like, OK. And I flipped over really sleeplessly. And I, like, smiling like this with a big erection, thinking she's going to be disgusted. And she immediately reached under the towel and starts doing this. And I'm like, holy fuck, right? <laughs> you know what? Snap my back back into place. <laughs> I remember thinking, this must be that new shiatsu they're talking about or something. Yeah. I uh, used to smoke a lot of weed in Canada, too. It's legal there now. Uh, it won't be for very long. They're turning into a... It's a bit weird in Canada now. Are there any Canadians here? No. <laughs> no, you're all locked in, unable to leave. <laughs> Who does that? What's that? Oh, I'm so fucking sorry. <laughs> These people don't know what Winnipeg's like. You have no fucking idea. Like, the fact that she's out <laughs> is fucking amazing. It's brutal in Winnipeg. Some of the coldest winters I've ever been in were in Winnipeg, and then, and then some of the hottest summers. And then combine that with bugs the size of, like, people flying around. <laughs> I'll do this one, too. This is in Winnipeg, but she'll, she'll appreciate this if she used to. When you guys talk about it being cold, it's quite funny to me, right? You said, oh, it's a bit cold, you know? Somebody came in the green room and I was laughing. I did a show in uh, northern Canada in a place called Nunavut, a Callowit. It's the most uh, northern part of Canada, basically. And uh, it's just basically some Eskimos and a few white people hanging out. And <laughs> I went up there to do a gig, and I landed. And uh, the, the, uh, the pilot had quite a sense of humor because he said, hey, welcome to none of it. It's a balmy minus 62. <laughs> now, I'd never heard of minus 62. It's one of those things where you hear in like a science fiction movie. You don't think it's real, minus 62. Could you imagine here minus six? Fuck it. Zero fucks you guys up. Can you imagine? <laughs> minus 62, right? So I go to the hotel. I go to the hotel. And I realized I forgot my razor and my shaving cream. So I thought, I'll run across the street and, and pick it up, right? Yeah, you can see where this is going. I got to the, to the main street to run across to get it. And I got halfway across the street. And I blinked. And my eyeballs froze shut. <laughs> I've never dealt with instant blindness before, right? Now, I'm in the middle of the road now. People are beeping, and I'm like, fuck, I can't, I don't know. Where do I go, right? Nobody helped me. Nobody fucking helped me. They all just beeped at me and swore at me, right? So I dropped to all fours, and I crawled back the way I thought I was going, and I got back, and I finally, listening, I heard the, I got back to the hotel, and I got into the hotel. I'm standing there for 10 minutes, fucking with frozen, and finally I opened my eyes. They thawed out, right? And standing in front of me were four Eskimos, Inuits, right? just looking at me. And I looked at them, and I said, what? And the one of them goes, you're supposed to wear goggles up here. <laughs> and I said, well, why didn't anyone tell me? And he goes, because that was fucking hilarious.
Listen, is uh, like like Steve said, you're a wonderful audience. I wish I had more time. You can find me on Instagram, Sean Collins66. So please give it a follow. I'm old, but I'm funny. See you later. Bye bye.